All right, well, let's get started, everybody. It's the Ferndale Library Podcast, brought to you by the friends of the Ferndale Library. It's so good to have three of the most awesome people from library world that I've ever had the honor to ever meet and know. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having us. (laughs) I am joined by Storm, Youth Services Librarian from Fowlerville. Hello, Storm. Hello, that's me. I'm joined from... I'm joined by Becca, who's teen youth services slash hybrid. Introduce yourself, Becca, from Royal Oak. Hello, I am the teen services librarian at Royal Oak Public Library. And we have Roddy, formerly of the Ferndale Library. We miss you, Roddy. How are you? I miss y'all too. I'm doing well. I'm Roddy. I'm just Roddy. So still (laughs) special (laughs) title. Still a sub here at the library, though. Yes, I do still sub at the library and I help out in the circulation department when I can. Yeah. So I wanted to get us all here today to talk about uh, third spaces, which is a phrase I literally heard 15 years ago. And I thought it was, I don't know, I guess I thought it was kind of cheesy then, but now I, I still hear people talking about it. And I remember people here in this community using that phrase as a, as a marketing tool to help defend the giant renovation that happened to this building. Mm. Um, but what does that phrase mean to you? And can you, can you even all recall when you first heard of that concept? Oh, well, I wasn't expecting the definition requirement to be tacked on at the end. Go for it, Roddy. I know you can do it. um, Essentially, a third space is essentially a space that is non-essential. So it's like not home or not school or work where you might find yourself you know, just spending time or just another place to spend time where it doesn't have the requirements of home or work slash school. Um, That's how I understood it. I'm sure there's more to the definition than that. Uh, But I was not aware of that technical term until I feel like at some point last year, I never really knew that there was an official word or phrase Mm -hmm. for that kind of a situation. I feel like I always just call them by their proper nouns, like the mall or the <laughs> library or an arcade. So to find out that they were all under the umbrella of third space, I was like, oh, that's a cool catch all phrase that I've never heard people use before now. And now I see it and hear it everywhere. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that, I um, because that's definitely kind of been my experience with understanding what a third space was. Um, I think that, as, especially as, as it relates to libraries in particular, um, I think a third space is a place that's definitely, there isn't any obligation for you to necessarily be there, and there's no necessarily responsibilities or anything for you to do while you're in these spaces, so it really is more of like this extracurricular area that's there. Mm-hmm. I don't think I remember the lo- when I first heard of that term, and I don't know. I'm not really jazzed about the term. I don't think it really does the definition of it justice. I don't think it's something that when people hear the word third space, I don't think people are like, I know exactly what that means because of the title. Sure. It doesn't really do it justice. But yeah, I, I don't think I would be able to remember, but probably two or three years ago, okay. maybe especially when I was really diving into um, what the future of libraries was going to look like and what the future was going to hold for them is when I heard it. Sure. I think I'm sure there were ta- we were already talking about it when I was in library school. I graduated in like 2018. I think it was already we were already starting to acknowledge libraries as this thing. Now, I do think it's a marketing term. I don't think it's a term that means anything outside of like a panel presentation to most people. <laughs> um but I also think that in the last couple of years, the idea of it has shifted because I know most of the time when we use third space, especially to talk about libraries, we're talking about it as like a community space where people socialize and get together. Mm-hmm. And I think after COVID, when people started working from home and looking for co-working spaces, I think it became clear that it's just as much about not necessarily socializing with people, but being present with other people. Mm -hmm. So like if you're studying or working, but you want to be able to people watch, you want to not be isolated in your home. There are still these spaces available to you where you can be, you know, where you can study and stuff, but that you're not isolated on your own. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, there's even a phrase for that 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 sounds even more uh, cold and lifeless and hollow and, and esoteric uh, and marketing ish for like just wanting to be around people who are also working in in an in an effect to help you stay focused. There's an even another marketing phrase for that. Maybe being too much of a marketer myself, like my whole Instagram uh, algorithm has started showing me reels of uh, millennials and Gen Z people saying there are no good third spaces left. Uh, and it's really frustrating. Becca, I know you've seen those too. <laughs> I have. It's um, And you want to scream. <laughs> you, because I have this awareness that the people who are asking that of libraries. There's one meme that's really trending right now that's basically saying libraries should be open later so there's a cost-free third space. And part of me just wants to know if those people know the hours that their library is currently open. Now, don't get me wrong, libraries aren't open like bar hours. It's not like at 11 p.m. you're going to find a library open. And I know that would frustrate some people because I really enjoyed when I was in college having late night libraries and all night libraries because that's when I got my studying done. But at the same time, I think maybe people just haven't checked in with their libraries in a while. <laughs> Check in. I think, I, I don't okay, so Tumblr days, but there are these posts that will always go around way back when where people were like, oh, I wish, I wish the library or like the bookstore had a bar. Like they were trying to sort of like commingle those two spaces. And every time I see those, like, I wish the library were open later posts and memes and things like that. I'm just like, oh, we're kind of like, we're just circling back to that old like Tumblr idea and mindset. But honestly, when I think of third spaces most um, now that that term has been reintroduced to me, I think of it most often in regard to teenagers. Um, Jeff will know this, but I will take up the defense for teens at any given opportunity because they are given so much crap that middle schoolers deserve. I I'm just kidding about that. Last <laughs> <time>. but, <laughs> but, but it's because, so I'm originally from Los Angeles and I remember in my teen years when I did get to go out with friends, it was kind of like that sort of typical teenagers hanging out at the mall, someone skateboarding, walking around, having fun with your friends at the food court, going to the bookstore, all of those things. And in recent years, you don't see that as much because the rules about these spaces started changing even before COVID where, you know, more restrictive curfews were put in or even if there wasn't a curfew it was like if you are under the age of 18 you have to have a an adult with you and long story short we just don't allow teenagers to exist in the wild anymore and so it really is a struggle for them sorry I think my dog's about to bark in case the microphone picks that up but um it's really a struggle for teens to have these spaces where they can just go because the spaces that were once, you know, I don't even want to say curated for them, but where they were literally just allowed to exist, they are no longer allowed to exist there as much anymore. But that's what makes the library so great because the library has never restricted that. There it goes. So which, that's all I had to say. Which opens it up to you. How do we engage teens, Becca? <laughs> We roast them to oblivion with the knowledge that we will ourselves then be roasted. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's one tactic. <laughs> it is one of the tactics. Um, no, because I agree with you. I The thing about um, teens and libraries is that teens have teen behavior. They just, they're hormonal, they're loud, they're still learning how to be human beings, but they're larger, and so people consider them obstructive. So they're fighting against you know, adults in libraries who don't want them there, but then like the parents don't want them with the children. So it's, I actually, I have in my notes for this, that like teen areas were like the first third spaces for me that I was recognizing in libraries because I saw my first teen area in a library when I was 12 and it wasn't at my library. I was visiting a different library and I was like, wait, they're making space for teens in libraries now because teens really like, you, you don't have a car, so everything you get to, you have to walk to. You have relatively little money. I mean, like, parents are giving their kids money, but not enough to do anything with. They can get their Starbucks and they can come to us. 
but it's just a matter of adults and adults in these spaces recognizing that teens also need to have a space, especially Mm -hmm. when we are the public library and teens are just as much the people we serve as the adults are. So like, don't get me wrong. There's a cap to behavior. They can't, you know, climb the walls. Um, But generally we've all run into situations where teens have been behaving regularly like teens, getting a little loud, getting a little touchy feely and adults have come in and been like, you don't belong in this space. Mm. And the problem is, is with these third spaces, the moment you tell somebody they don't belong in the space, they may never come back. Right. That space is no longer for them. Storm, what is it like in, in Fowlerville? Like, cause here in Ferndale and sort of with, with Royal Oak too, we're kind of like within walking distance of schools. So we do get teen traffic. Do you have to like try to coax teens too? Are teens getting to your library? I guess this is becoming a teen conversation. I yeah. will I will move it no. elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we do get teens coming into our library real, pretty often. We do have a lot of um, regulars that come uh, after school and everything. Um, and we really do try to provide specific spaces for them. Right now, Fowlerville is, um, like, our library is very small right now. And uh, luckily, we are going through a renovation uh, soon. Um, hopefully is going to be starting sometime this spring. Um, but eventually in one of the many phases, we do have specifically a teen space that we are going to implement. And I think we're all very excited for that because we do have those issues as well with teens and that they come in and we want to be able to say like, yes, you are welcome here. And it is hard when, you know, we have to say, oh, yep, you're getting a little loud. We have to be respectful of everybody else around here, please, and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think we're we're really excited to be able to give them that space. Mm-hmm. And um, we are very fortunate that we are in walking distance and we are seen as a safe place for them to be. Um, they can come in with their Hungry Howie's pizza and yeah. <laughs> and eat over in the corner. So it's 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 really nice, and we hope to... Um, only make it even better for them. I wanted to ask what are some of the things about your library or even some of your other favorite libraries that you've seen that you think really qualify as prime third spaces that people might be overlooking. Roddy, do you have any in mind for Ferndale? For Ferndale in particular? Sure. Um, Or did any spring to mind from other libraries you've seen? Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the program room a lot, but also the front area. So Ferndale has this really great, like, sort of um, bar seating setup in our front, in the front lobby area where there's lots of chairs and stuff like that. And that's a really easy space for people to just come in if they just want to sit for a second. It's great in summer if you just want to get out the heat or if it's raining, you just want to get out the rain for a little while like that. That always that space in particular seems to be really um popular and just like a really solid zone for people to hang out in. I also like the magazine room uh, that we have sort of tucked away in the back. Um, That's just that the fireplace is right there and the walls are all have like, oh, it's the quiet reading room technically, but you know, it's just its own enclosed space from the rest of the library as well. Yeah. So I really like those spaces. And then for my local library for Redford, they have this sort of um, where where Ferndale's program room would be. They have like a kind of cafeteria-esque room. It has like vending machines and tables and stuff like that. So every time I dip into my local library, I see people just kind of hanging out in there. Lots of teenagers will go sit in there, especially in the after school hours and just kind of hang out, have a snack, wait to go home, things like that. And it seems like such a great use of that particular space. So yeah. Brody, this is breaking news, but we're going to finally turn this space into at least for half of a day the teen section. Yes. So, this is all I've ever wanted. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear this. So <laughs> this makes me so happy. It's this beautiful little glassed off room that you can close and be loud, but also still be a little under observation. So Yeah, no, that's oh, perfect. That yeah. is exactly something that we're trying to use for our teen space once we <laughs> once we have one. Yeah. We, I feel so bad that we don't really have like a dedicated area for them really because we, we do generally at Fowlerville, but it is like 
right smack dab in the middle of the library, mm -hmm. right in the front where it's right in front of the circulation desk. And that, like, because we're just like, oh, we got to watch them. But like, I wouldn't even want to be in there. You're going right. to feel like a, like a goldfish. Right. Just like people watching you like that, that. There's no privacy there. There's no like I can just chill and like be myself. Sure. Um, yeah. No, that is exactly something that we're trying to do. Any other spaces, though, Storm, that you really dig or want to shout out or just promote? When you're um, our library is so small right now <laughs> um, and it's so full of, one, and it's full of literal animals it yes it is they're all dead but um they're taxidermy i should i should show sure. it that yes. i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> they're taxidermy animals yep. an important addendum yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, vibes just um, vibes Yep. Yeah, just it, oh yeah, it's yeah, it's great. Um, <laughs> no, uh, there are certain spaces in our library that teams do like to hang out. Um, one space in particular that's just really cozy, actually, um, and it's all the way in the very back of the library, far away from the circulation desk. Is uh, we do have like a little fireplace there with like a couch and some comfy um, chairs there, and that is really. That's really nice. There's um, outlets there, so a lot of teens will go there, plug their phones in, and just kind of hang out there. Nice. Um, that's a really nice one. Um, and then we do try to provide some kind of uh, after-school program or something like event for um, teens or middle grade around that area. So we do have things going on in the program room after school. Usually it's D and D, or it could be a teen craft. So we try to create our program room to be that space for them as well if they want to come in to do fun things nice. <laughs> with us but really it's it's the fireplace that's that's the big draw for them it's far away and they can be comfortable and chill we had our last big renovation during covid and one thing they really focused on and i really appreciate that they did this was they focused more on comfort seating than we had in the past i would say before the renovation almost all of the seating in the library was like chair and table seating. Um, and they really made moves to not only for adults, but for kids as well, have places where you could sort of lounge. Now, of course, some of these places we did not realize were going to be used the way we were. For instance, we put new seating in the teen section, but then we put some behind the stairs in the youth section. And of course, the teens want to be where they're less observed than where they're more observed uh, for good reason. But um, that's our old teen area. Uh oh, uh, okay, sorry. Uh oh, just trying to um, provide no, visual good. aids. But that um, what's on the screen is uh, what we moved away from. We got them more computers, so now the teens have as many computers as the adults, basically. Which, of course, is not um, one of the favorite things of the adults. But we did lean more toward having places where you could lounge. And that, I mean, that's part of why would you stay all day in the library if there's nowhere to read? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I will say, I just wanted to, I have like a favorite library in Michigan that's relatively new that is different as a third space. And I was wondering if this might be a good time to mention it because their spaces are treated so differently from any other library I've been to. Um, and if you've never been to Ann Arbor District Library Westgate branch, it is certainly not a thing that every library can do. I think it's only a bigger system like Ann Arbor where they could have this one sort of experimental branch. But I feel like in libraries, we always have to strike this balance between community space and collections because the collections are necessary and they are the main part of why you go to a library. But we're slowly trying to sort of equalize that with community spaces. And they have a coffee shop that's attached they have a lot of space. They, I think their collection is a little bit smaller than it would be in a normal library because the books aren't always the focus. It's always, it's also mostly forward facing books, which makes it more like a Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm. um, and then technically speaking, they do have a bookstore right next door. So it's really, it's like an iconic space to go if you love books. Um, but it was, it's just, it, it was not like any other library I'd seen. And it's always fun to start seeing like that first library that starts really making moves towards something different. Because uh -huh. when I was a kid, it was Clinton McComb that had a teen section. And I was like, whoa, we're giving space to the teens. I was going to ask about that. Did you did any of you have favorite spaces or nooks or corners or areas of your your childhood library or memories from your childhood library or any 
any library you visited in your in your in your youth that um or just pre-college that you have a vivid memory of i actually have uh an interesting take on that actually um because so my hometown um is uh in stockbridge and so stockbridge is part of the capital area district library system and Stockbridge is small. Like, I don't even know, at least when I was a child, um, it was uh, a village. It's not big enough to be a town. Um, so very small library. And I don't even think there was a program room in that library. It was just at, uh, any programs were just held in the back area. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember that there was like there was not a space for teens at all. Um there was like kind of like a children's room with all of the collection. And then there was like the adult area with all of their stuff. So there really was not any like lounging area at all. And I remember um, there would be teens. I did not go, unfortunately, but I remember there would be teens. Um, my peers would go to the library, but they would hang out outside the library. Like they would be in the front of the library and they would just be chilling there. And I remember there was kind of this, um, I don't know, just this feeling from the community of like, oh, wow, those teens have nowhere to go. They're just hanging out in front of the library. We don't want like our families to go to the library because they have to go past these teens. And that was like a really big issue. So there really wasn't any space um, as in like in my childhood, really, as like this teen area. Um, but jumping forward, at least uh, in college, I loved um, going to uh, the MSU library, um, the Michigan State Li- University library. I loved finding all of these hidden nooks and crannies where I could just like find a comfy chair and just like chill and like find an outlet and be completely just like by myself in the stacks of the library. It was, it was, I, I loved it over there. I'll just go first and say similarly that we really didn't have much space at the Ferndale library back in the day, uh, back in the, back in the nineties. There, there were places, but there just was no consideration for comfort because all the furniture was just 70s benches and stuff. And yeah, it was kind of a bummer. It was kind of a bummer until I got to the Michigan State Library, and I really loved that. How about you, Roddy? I would have to say the first library that comes to mind was actually the high school, like the library that my high school had. It was this I say tiny in retro, like in respect to like most libraries, but for like a school library, it was a decent size. And I loved it because no one else seemed to know it was there. So I constantly had it to myself. Mm -hmm. And if there were days where I was just like, I have reached the precipice of like human interaction that I can handle. I would just go in there. The librarian who worked there knew who I was and I knew who she was. Cause like I said, I was one of the very few students in there and I would just hang out and just, have time, have a ball, enjoying my silence. Um, And then my mom took us to libraries when we were younger um, quite frequently. Um, There was one that was pretty far away from where we lived actually, but it was a decent library. But in terms of like having that sort of ideal space, my high school had one that I liked. And then in college, I just made great use of my college's library. They had all sorts of like nooks. They had tables where you could sit with other people if you wanted to or just by yourself and someone could sit across from you and just do their own things if you really wanted to be off by yourself you could go sit on these little individual desks with like really high like sides so no one could really see you Um, they also had like classroom spaces upstairs so if you needed to have like a study group where you would like work on something for class. Um, You would have like whiteboards and chalkboards available for you to use there as well. And there were like couches and it was very comfortable and cozy. Like my college library was pretty, pretty great. I know you said pre-college, but I just had to at least acknowledge that. But yeah. Yeah, I gotta say my, um, the first library I had a library card at was Ferndale and I don't remember a single thing about going to Ferndale Library as a kid. So I, I'd have to believe you about the 90s. Just, I, there just wasn't anything. There was like, I, you would go I down. I had a library card there, but I can't remember very much about the library itself from then. I just remember these extremely uncomfortable wooden benches by a window that I would sit at. But, you know, what did I know? Here, quick flashback. I know this is an audio medium and folks won't just be able to see this, but I'm going to put it in the show notes. Here's a flashback to 1957-ish. Look at this! Look at this stylish guy. This is my favorite third space library photo. That's what Ferndale and used to look like. 
as a fellow looks- library that was really committed to mid-century modern, um, seeing any pictures of the library from the 60s and 70s is really rough because you can tell nothing in the library was comfortable. <laughs> I was just say, that looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, look at how many chairs there are there and there's like no tables next to it. Like, you just, you just, you sit. This you this sit. was actually yeah. this was actually expensive stylish furniture in its day. It was designed by Herman. Miller. Oh, it truly was. Yeah, yeah. it looked hey, gorgeous. You know, if any of it was still around today, it would still be considered expensive and stylish, but comfortable. Sure, comfortable. <laughs> but but <laughs> where the question goes. But going forward, any other memories beyond Royal Oak, Becca? Oh, yeah. Well, um, in fifth grade, I moved to Warren. And uh, Warren is the third largest city in the state of Michigan. So it has four libraries. But unfortunately, none of them are close enough for me to walk. And um, so unfortunately, that's a real limiting factor when you're a kid. And uh, so I I have some memories of the library. But as a person who's like programming for teens, I was like, I'm like, I'm not I wasn't one of these kids because, like, I would have had to have my single mom drive me to the library to do things. Um, but I, I was a school library kid because you can walk to the school library, and I spent a lot of time in school libraries. I can't remember any specific spaces, but that's because school libraries are meant for work for a reason. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I also enjoyed my college library. I would spend um, – I went to Wayne State, and I would spend most of my day at the Pretty Kresge Library, which closed at, like, 8.30 or so. And then I would walk over to the undergraduate library, was, which was open all night. And I don't know. There's just something about that co-working space, that hot third space, but, like, that co-working space that was really helpful for me in college. And I think it probably would have been helpful for me in middle school and high school if I had been able to get there. Um I will say I have worked at, not to like talk down about the library I'm currently at, there is a nice thing about this library, which is that our youth area is in the basement. And funny enough, most of the libraries I worked at, the youth area has been the basement. But that means that kids can be fairly loud without bothering adults at all, Mm -hmm. because there's an entire ceiling keeping you from bothering the people upstairs. Um, But another library I used to work at had this thing that inside like, beneath the stairs there were these bean shaped cutouts that kids could hide in and occasionally it was a fairly slow library occasionally i would go hide in the beans myself just because it was a vibe you know like they weren't particularly comfortable they were just carpeted it's not like we had like a bunch of pillows or anything in them but it was kind of cool to just be like hidden under the stairs in your own little space sure I do think there is, because I have seen a lot of those recently in that, like, there's seating, like, within walls in libraries now. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they're probably maybe a little bit more comfortable than that. But I think there's just also any, it's interesting to see something that's completely different. Like, I think there's also just something about, like, our inner child when we see, like, oh, my gosh, there's a hole in the wall and I could be there. I got to go. So there's something appealing about that. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of like, I mean, there's so many facets of this, so I can't get into all, but like, there are these certain like romantic aspects of reading that we all have. Libraries just being a major part of them. So I feel like it's like a strong idea of what libraries are because it's romanticized into this one thing. Um, but it, one of the things about reading that is romanticized is these little like book cubbies, right? Where you're like literally curled up in like a fort or like a, you know, like it is you being very cozy in this very small space on your own reading. And I think libraries that have spaces like that, especially for kids are doing it right because it's, it's kind of encouraging you to read because it's giving into the romanticism of it all. Uh, I think our social media plays so much into that in that like you see all of, you see bookstagram and you see book talk and you see like, the aesthetic and the vibe of libraries and you see oh look at this cozy reading corner look at this you know this beautiful large window that i'm going to read by with this fire and i think that really plays a role into creating that and why people are drawn to things like that in libraries i would say even like pre the book talk 
uh, book Twitter, even Pinterest aesthetics, I had a very particular reading space ideal in my mind as a small child that, you know, this stuff really does feed into because as y'all are both talking, I'm just thinking, I'm like, oh, yeah, I had it all mapped out in my head. It was going to have a bay window window and a lounger. There are going to be plants, even though I have the worst allergies in the world. And it was just like, it was so specific. And I still want it now that I'm thinking about it. (laughs) Here's a question that none of us can possibly answer because it gets into almost psychology and society and sociology. But like, why? Like even today, I, I made a post about, hey, third spaces. And someone was like, yeah, but I like drinking coffee and chit chatting. Why do you think people are still overlooking libraries as a third space? Um, A thing that's heartbreaking to me working in this basement youth department is that I work a lot of nights. And so nights are just generally quiet at the library because nobody knows when we're open and they think we're not open late, but we're open late anyway. um, But people will come down the stairs and they will immediately start shushing their children because it's so quiet downstairs. And the fact is that there's nobody downstairs. That's the only reason it's quiet down here. And so immediately I have to be like, no, 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 we're not whispering. No, you can speak at your normal volume. You can like stop trying to limit the child in the space. Because if you start that young telling them it's this quiet space that they have to be controlled in, we're never going to get to the point where they're an adult that wants to use the library like that. I mean, there were instances where people would, I mean, even now there there are people who still carry that ideal. So people would have normal conversations in the library at their normal voices. And then someone else would come up and complain and say, like, why are these people talking? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, we're allowed to have conversation in the library, actually. That's not a genuine rule we don't i mean of course there are limitations but there's limitations to most public spaces about like conduct and things like that but just talking a small child expressing excitement which everyone loves to see like we're never going to try to limit or police those things Mm -hmm. you know we actually quite enjoy that um and then, I mean, speaking mostly for myself, but when I was at Ferndale, I know that I was an absolute chatterbox no matter where I was. So, you know, it just, I just hope that instead of distracting people, I was encouraging them to have or feel comfortable having conversation. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> I think uh, it's, I think, and I mean, definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like almost everyone that has worked in a library can relate or have an experience where a patron has shushed them. Like, Mm -hmm. just like, you're like, I work here. I promise it's okay. Like, it's fine. We can do this. (laughs) I think everyone has had that experience. Because I, and I think it's because there are such competing ideas of what a library is. So even the people who are trying to third space the library and trying to converse and trying to make it a community space are up against people who refuse to change their idea of what a library is. And they're like, the noise, it's unbearable. And you're like, the that's like coffee shop noise. That's mm-hmm. they're not mm-hmm. even loud yet. They're just they're just speaking. Mm-hmm. That's they're like I can't hand. We have some people in our computer lab that are actively adults who will sometimes do this to make us aware that they don't like the noise level. Wow! <laughs> and, How and passive aggressive. <laughs> I love um, it. By the way, because it's an audio medium, I just put my fingers very visibly and aggressively in my ears. <laughs> my fingers in my ears to show that things are too noisy in the public library. Right. And um, we do, I mean, our library is large enough that we do have silent study space. Mm-hmm. We have an entire room where the door can close. Same with where us. You have, yep. There is a quiet study space. If you are committed to, to being quiet in the library, you can go in the quiet study space, but then people get really mad that they're, you know, they're paying to work at the lot li- that they can work anywhere they want. And we're like, yeah, but then you have to put up with the, social contract that is outside of the quiet room, you do not have mm-hmm. to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I have my other theories too. I think that if the rest of the world is like me and I don't, I don't know if they are. Roddy knows I have a problem sitting still, but I do worry that the rest of the world might have a problem sitting still the whole cell of just come here and hang out, sit down and read. I know that I personally have like trouble grasping that, but boy, what a beautiful concept. Just a, just a safe space building where you can come and chill and hang out and sit. It's kind of a tricky sell because people might feel like they always need to be busy or doing something or 
they are listening, if they are reading a book, maybe it's an audiobook so that they can keep working on something and they can't sit still. Roddy, you know me. You know that that's where my brain would go. Yeah. People you know, need to relax. I, I can find myself relating to that life a lot because most of my reading has been via audiobook lately, yeah. too. But at the same time, I really. Because I have already had the habit of doing that, though, so I have to sort of add this little uh, that little qualifier on there. Mm -hmm. I do try to make sure that I have or spend time in dedicated, like quiet spaces for me to enjoy that hobby. So even at home, I have my own little space and I know for a fact that I can hop in my car or even ride a bike or whatever to my library to enjoy that space. And honestly, because we have such an on-the-go cu culture, like people probably aren't thinking about that aspect because they're thinking, yeah, I could do that, but I also have a list of like 10 other things that I should probably be doing at the same time too. Mm -hmm. So I think that while libraries are doing a really good job of presenting themselves as this extra space, it's also like a deeply ingrained cultural thing that has to be worked on too to where people feel comfortable or find that they have the headspace to say no it's okay for me to sit down somewhere mm -hmm. and read a book for an hour or two or all day even so it's really hard because like you know there's just so much underlying the mindset that has to be worked at you know right I think we we got over the hump of libraries are antiquated, libraries didn't get into the 21st century, libraries are disconnected from technology. I think we got over that. I think you're you're seeing that, right? Maybe in the news that millennials and Gen Y, they they got it. They got the memo that libraries are great that you can come and check out all this stuff. The whole list of bullet points, ebooks, audiobooks included. I think that memo got through. Uh so I don't think it's hopeless that we can also get the hey, come be loud in your library hangout memo. Anybody else feel that hope? <laughs> I like that tagline, come be loud in your library. Yeah. Someone's got to use that. I was there gonna... was, I mean, it was just posted today. So even though most of us are social media people, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but Birmingham, Alabama just had a punk rock concert at their library as part of their Loud in the Library series. Like a hardcore punk band shows... like that one in Denny's? Yeah. All right. It, well, there are sure people moshing in the library programming room. And yeah. I think that is incredible. I don't know if we'll ever get to the point. Our community spaces, when they were designed in the 60s, were made notoriously small. So unfortunately, both of our rooms can fit about 50 people. Okay. <laughs> but okay. I, it, it is uh, it is really cool that uh, things are starting to change to make them more community spaces. I think another sticking point for us like as libraries as the idea of libraries mm -hmm. is that I think there's still this mental distinguishing factor between libraries and like a community center and that libraries are still about books. And so if people don't read, if they're not readers, there's this like wall between them and coming to the library. They think it's the same wall that like, people will bring a book to you overdue and will immediately start like gratuitously apologizing. Right. And you're just like, I need you to know that it's not personally taken out of my paycheck. And I want you here. That is why we are, so, we at least are fine free. Mm -hmm. Like these limits of access. I, I honest, I don't care that you're reading. I don't care if what you're reading is something that you're ashamed of mm -hmm. because there's a lot of shame and that, like book talk books that are, I'm a romance reader. I'm um, like, Roddy, you know, and I, have people, sorry. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, so sorry. I, I love your shirt, Roddy. I had the same oh, one. Thank at some you. Point. <laughs> but it's, it's like, there are people who are like ashamed of not reading or what they read or something that they just, they don't want to have to face us and expect us to be like, I'm not checking this bodice ripper out to you. Why aren't you reading Hamlet? You should be reading Hamlet. And I'm like, I'm not reading Hamlet. <laughs> Would you like to hear the last three books I read on Hoopla? Because it's an interesting time. Right. And it's just, I think there's still this barrier of access that people ha have like an authority problem with libraries. 
<laughs> that we're just going to, like, they're going to walk in and we're going to be mad that they're not reading. We're going to be mad that they're trying to talk instead of reading. Mm-hmm. We're going to be, you know, we're going to shush them because they're being too loud. And I think, I think libraries have had really strong PR for about a hundred years. And now we're trying to reverse the PR and mm-hmm. it is slow as molasses to do mm-hmm. because they've done such a good job up until now. Oh yeah. By the way, listener, if you know anyone who has checkout anxiety, tell them that a lot of libraries have self checkout now, so they don't even have to interact with people if they don't want. Sorry, True just me. had to get that out there. But yeah, I think I was so glad you brought up shame. I am not going, I'm going to do my best Jeff knows I could go on about this topic forever (laughs) to not go down the shame and romance novel and all of that stuff. But yeah, that's such a good point. I wouldn't have even thought about that Mm -hmm. because I don't have shame anymore (laughs) when it comes to what I read. (laughs) And it's like, it's the same conversation when you're like checking out tampons at the like Mm -hmm. register and you're like, this person... I don't care. My job is the books are all just books to me, you know, like I'm not there to judge you. I am literally there just to scan the thing over the thing. And I don't even have to do that. Self checkouts are a thing at most libraries now. Yeah. But like, even if, even if you were facing down a library, like m- most, we all have weird reading, reading tastes. We've all read weird things. So like, or it'll be the opposite thing. Like you will go to pass me something like Ice Planet Barbarians and I'll be like, good one. Good choice. Yes. Like it's not, <laughs> it's it's not as scary as I think people I think there is still a little bit of like a fear that librarians are these very serious, very official beings and we're we're not <laughs> No, I mean, the thing that I wish you would do. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, we carry these items for a reason because we we see them as like legitimate. And even if we don't carry them, maybe we just didn't get around to buying them. That doesn't make them any less legitimate because I've had uh, patrons like, as you talked about with romance books, but I had someone who was an adult more than likely older than I am, who was apologizing to me for checking out a graphic novel. And I was like, I have a Hellboy box set at home. Like, this is a no judgment zone. Just tell me if you like it so that I can check it out in the future. And I just, I don't think that people, like, they they don't associate the whole, like, we carry this item specifically for you to enjoy aspect. So there is no shame in checking this out because we want you to enjoy or get to experience something that's why we're here and i don't think that people really get that yet um so yeah Mm -hmm. just storm these books are a thing too i find yeah they're like why i'm so sorry for being in the children's section (laughs) any thoughts storm on to add on this yeah, um, I mean, we, I, I actually do because I used to have a roommate actually that worked in a bookstore and I worked in a library. And it was really interesting because I was, I would check out like middle grade books that I'd want to read or just something really weird and I would check it out. And I remember she was like, wow, it is so different in the library world. Like, because in this, bookseller world they were definitely a little bit of like oh this person reads that and this person reads that and there was a little bit of judgment but in the library world like our first and foremost like we just we just care that you're using us we care that you know we we want you to be here we love that you're here read go ahead check out a book go ahead and I mean at least like getting my master's degree in library sciences, it was really kind of hammered into us this idea of also just like privacy in general. So like, we're not going to even say anything about what you're checking out. I will say that I definitely do like the whole like, oh my gosh, I have this on my TBR, please. Like if you read it, like tell me how it is. But like, other than that, like I don't, you're not supposed to make any comments about what people are checking out because it's all about privacy. It's all about like accepting that. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I really hope that there can be a, this huge push in this idea that, like, you don't have to feel shame. Like, we're here for you. Like, mm-hmm. we really are just happy that you're here. Yeah. And I would just say that the only difference between spending your three hours at your laptop in a coffee shop and spending your three hours at a laptop in the library is that you spent 450 and in this place you didn't. 
I don't know. And I will say, like, some libraries are starting to try to do a little bit more, and they're trying to have, like, the the coffee shop I was talking about earlier it was, like, a separate, it was, like, a private coffee shop that was attached to the library. Yeah. But there are a lot of libraries that try to, like, run their own coffee shops and stuff to try and appeal to this third okay. space crowd. Got to have my Bev. Um, but, right. But on the other hand, like, we can't be everything. Right. Coffee shops are businesses and they make money to continue doing what they do. Right. We are not businesses. We do not try to run for a profit. And so it's kind of hard to encourage like, yeah, we should start putting in like coffee shops. So like people never have to leave the <laughs> library and then they can like hang out for longer and it'll be cool. But like at the same time, is, is the library going to hire a barista? Will the taxpayers be mad if the library hires a barista right. or are we going to have people like me who are already wearing three hats also serving coffee to people? Yeah. <laughs> because it's a taxpayer funded institution. It gets complicated. Yeah. And I think I, I think one of the like easy boundaries that is falling away, I don't know about everybody's libraries, but we just very recently got to the point, well, not very recently, within the last three or four years, made it so that you could eat in the library. Yeah, like, I we think had we're... a rule against eating in the library about yeah. three, four years ago. And I think starting to realize that maybe there are spaces you can't eat. You can't eat over a keyboard in the computer lab, but that people can be reasonable Right. And we can just kind of let people use the space. Right. Yeah, over at Fowlerville, we um, we do allow people to eat in the library, but we have very designated areas. We have some areas with carpet and um, other areas with tile. So we just say, like, if you're going to eat, please stick to the tiled areas. Right. Um, also, just because uh, all of our collection is actually on the carpeted area. And right. so that way, we're staying away from our collection. Right. And so we have, like... We call it the cafe area because we, because uh, it it is like we have like some little tables there with some chairs and like there's some outlets and everything. But like that is definitely where we have that space just specifically for that because we do know, especially in regards to our conversation earlier with teens. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're gonna have like the couple bucks they have. They're gonna go to the gas station across the street. They're gonna come back and they're gonna want to eat. And we want to be able to provide a space for them to just like exist and like have that food before they get picked up from their parents or something right. like that. So. Yep, we have those specific spaces. Spaces. Because it's, it's needed. You can uh, give a mouse a cookie, but don't have a cookie next to the mouse. <laughs> That's good. Roddy? Especially with adolescence, it really felt like a, a, when we didn't allow food, it felt really terrible when you have these kids coming directly after school and they haven't eaten since lunch and they're growing so they constantly have metabolism and you're just like if you want to eat you need to go sit out in the cold and do so because you cannot eat in here like it was really it was really funky <laughs> uh i don't want to take up too much of your time but i also think this is going to become a mini series so i'll probably have you all back on at some point to keep the conversation going but you know i think it was so good to get everyone's perspective thank you so much I just think it's so important, you know, as libraries go around and they have their millages come up, it's like, it, I feel like we won that battle of like, you value this place because we give you all the free stuff. I feel like we got that, but you should value this space because it's a space. I, mm -hmm. That's what I want to get across. Any cl closing thoughts or things we left unsaid that we stirred loose from your brains? Uh, yeah, I think we all got something. <laughs> yeah, please, this is a chance. <laughs> Did you want to go first? Yeah, I go first. Um, because it's right. It's piggybacking off of Jeff because he said we had this like successful move to convince people that we have all these materials they can check out. I think one of the unfortunate things we did was convince people that all of the that they can access most of those materials. Yeah. From uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we did a great job convincing them that they never have to come to their public library. If they don't want to, they can get a card online and they can only use ebooks and audiobooks and then they never have to come into their library. And now we're realizing that we were just too good at our jobs doing that. <laughs> Roddy, what were you gonna say? Um so this is probably another topic for another day. Sorry, my yeah. dog left up here. Um, but also that there was this really interesting conversation happening where people were trying, I don't, I spent way too much time looking at book Twitter, but um, long story short, people were just like, 
libraries should have like built-in playgrounds or libraries should have coffee shops or libraries should have, they, they turned into these huge arguments online because I think that as we were talking about with the whole coffee shop example, because Becca had fantastic points about that, is that we need to view libraries as their own third space and not try to make them into other third spaces. Mm -hmm. Like the, the way that the library is set up is valid in of itself without having to add these extra little exciting f features sure. onto it. Um, so your library is great because it's a library <laughs> is essentially what I'm trying to get yeah. at. Yeah. Your library is already great. Uh, you can be loud, but it doesn't need extra bells and whistles. It only needs punk bands. Um, Storm? I, actually, I was going to say something very similar is that um, I think for anyone that works in libraries, I feel like there's this pressure to have to provide more and more and more like, oh, we're doing this now. Okay, now we're going to do this. Now we're yes. going to add this. And it's just constant pressure. Like, I, I mean, I feel so burnt out already. Yeah. Like, I don't know how y'all are feeling, but like, I, there's so many different it's, hats that we're wearing now. It's mission and, creep. Yep, exactly. And so this idea that like the library still isn't enough is kind of frustrating because we're doing so much already and the library is enough. It's enough how it is right now. Mm -hmm. Like obviously there's still things that we can do. We can still improve on things. We can still evolve and change how as society evolves and changes. But I don't think we need to keep this pressure on libraries to be everything all at once for people. We can, we can just exist and we can be enough. Yeah. Support all social services, not just libraries. Like we are allowed to have community centers and playgrounds and social workers without all of that having to be within the public library. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We, we're, we are enough and we're doing enough. Just come hang out, read a book <laughs> and plug into the Wi-Fi. check your email. You all are so wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. And I want to keep the conversation going. Uh, this was really exhilarating. And I've got some ideas about marketing now. I'm going to go tell the world to be loud in the library. And I'm going to go try and one up. What was it? Uh, a library in Alabama, Becca, you said? Birmingham? Mm -hmm. yeah. Birmingham Public Library in Alabama. Uh, we have had Storm from Fowlerville and Becca from Royal Oak. And Roddy, it's so good to see you. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in like a week. Are you going to come into the library soon? something like that right. yeah <laughs> uh, thank you so much jeff yes folks at home you've listened to another episode of a little too quiet it's the ferndale library podcast and it's brought to you by the friends of the ferndale library we thank john duffy for giving us music to open and close each episode you can go to ferndalefriends.org for more information about supporting this podcast and i'll have links to the other libraries that are represented here so that listeners can go support those libraries too uh, but for this podcast, remember to rate, review, subscribe, or just tell your friends about it and go hang out in your library, please. We'll be back next week with more. Thanks for listening. Thanks.